Hello everyone, so Monkey Suit Azami here back again with you on Mushy Pedal. We are on episode 15 of season 1 and in the last episode uh, we had um, uh, Manami who was sent over to the Cycling Sports Centre to scout out uh, Sohoku um, with the intention of specifically looking for Makashima because obviously we know Toto and Makashima have that sort of rivalry friendship thing going on. Um, yeah, and Toto sent Manami to go pretty much scout him because he's an interesting climber but instead he ended up finding Onoda and now Manami thinks that Onoda is the interesting climber so it's going to be interesting because no other school knows about Onoda or even the first years at all at Sohoku right um, because at the prelims um, Kinjo, Todokoro and Makishima specifically left them out so you know they couldn't be scouted that way um, so it's going to be interesting to see like if Onoda does get to in a high, whether Hakone Academy are going to know about Onoda at that point or not. Um, I kind of don't want them to know about him. I kind of want to see the shock on everyone's faces when he comes out of the blue and they're like they don't know how to deal with him. Because I think specific like that will give Onoda and Sohoku as a whole like the edge of like having somebody that does something a bit differently because um, they can't plan ahead. Uh, which is uh, which would be very cool to see, but um, I mean I don't know I don't know because right now um, Manami and Toto are like not on the same page regarding who the interesting climber is. Toto might second guess and he might figure it out if, like if he sees Makashima again because then Toto will know that Manami was talking about someone completely different. Um, but we'll have to wait and see. But yeah, I mean you can see as the thing I I'm. I'm sure there's only six participants allowed. I don't know why there would be any more than that. Because I'm thinking like that that makes it interesting for the next like I don't know how many episodes. We'll just say like the next few episodes about who's actually going to get picked for Inter High because th there's already three that are going definitely right, and that's going to be the the uh, the third years right, Kinjo, Todokoro, and Makishima. But we've got the t the the set the two second years who we haven't seen much of, so I don't know. It would kind of almost be underwhelming if either of those two or both of them ended up going unless they're going to sort of focus a bit more attention on them in these coming episodes um because then you know you've got the three first years obviously uh, not including Sugimoto because <laughs> I don't think Sugimoto is going let's be honest um so I don't know it's going to be interesting to see who gets picked anyway uh, but they have to finish the the a thousand kilometers in four days or whatever and Onoda still has a lot to go but I don't know I believe because Manami give them a like a reason, like a like something to strive for by getting to the end of high so he can give his bottle back and whatever, right? So it's something to strive for, but uh, I don't think there's anything else to really talk about. We're just going to get into this episode, see what we get. So without further ado, let's go. All right. Episode 15. All right, so... Fucking hell. Well, it's started now. This is like the the sort of the equivalent of like the the last straight um, The reasoning as to why Kinjo will be selecting people to go to in high um, Depends upon this. At least that's what Totokoro said anyway during the it's like it's not just a case of finishing You know the a thousand kil eight kilometers and it's like I never thought that that would be the case anyway Because if everyone finished you can't take everyone so you know I knew there would be there would be more to it than that um <clears throat> so we'll see how that turns out in the end. Um, the fact that Imaizumi sets his alarm 10 seconds before. <laughs> Who the hell sets an alarm with seconds? Who does that? That's fucking so stupid. It's ridiculous. Um, anyway, yeah, so during the whole thing, um, I thought it was interesting on that, like, asking... Naruko and Imaizumi exactly what it takes to, to participate. I mean, I, I thought I thought it was on at first, but I think he's asking specifically like what they think are the um oh, fuck what's the word? What are the um what are the things that Kinjun is going to take into account when he's choosing who's going to go? Right, I think that's pretty much what he was asking. Right, as opposed to just like because because I thought. At the beginning, I thought it was it was obvious that Kinjo had basically said, "If you don't, um, if you don't get to a thousand kilometers in these four days, then you're not going to the end of high." I remember him saying that at some point, 
obviously not in those exact words, but I remember him saying it at some point. And I don't know, he could have just been saying it in his head. Or he could have just been saying it to the third years. Um, but I don't know, I just remember him saying it. So I thought that, that bit was pretty obvious. But I, I think it's a bit more than that. And I was asking, like, what are the reasons as, as to why he picks who he's going to pick. Um, but of course, like, the, the I mean... You would think, like, well, the first goal is to get the 1,000 kilometers, because otherwise you're just not getting through. So, so yeah. But Kinjo, um, he uh, changed the the sentence so that the the monitor itself changes what um, what was being told. So it's laps completed now, which basically gives them a changes it from like not a race, but like sort of just focusing on your individual. Um, distance covered in a way versus uh versus like laps completed which changes the sort of perspective of of the race as and now it becomes a it literally becomes a race so to get on top right so it gives them that little bit of a a spur as opposed to not just thinking about completing the a thousand kilometers but to actually you know to actually um to actually start like putting more effort into it to get to that top spot you know um of course, it pointed out that they were all getting used to their bikes, uh, depending on you know the things that they had, had like, depending on the things that the bike had been changed to. So obviously the gear shifts, the 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 handlebars, and um, uh, the heavy back wheels and stuff. But they're they're all getting used to it, um, and this is something that's going to like be really beneficial for them because I think I've said this before in a previous discussion, but the idea that you know if it's like working with weights. Uh, if you have like you know extra weights on your your arms when you're um, doing some kind of like muscular weight training and stuff like that, that when you eventually take them off, everything is lighter because you know what I mean because you're used to the heavier to the uh, to the heavier weights and stuff. So it's going to act in the exact same way. When they eventually get their stuff back, it's going to feel much more um, like much lighter and much easier to to. Uh, to ride um i mean I, I think that goes more for imaizumi and uh onida really because naruko it's only the change in posture really right um i don't know really what could i don't know if it would help naruko physically like it does imaizumi and onida because i think what it, it, it's more I think of a mental thing for Naruko actually like more like this idea that you can't just always focus on speed for everything I think that's probably what that what like Kinjo and whatnot's trying to get through to him is like by removing that your whole thing with speed becomes like irrelevant um so I think that's the whole thing they're trying to change with like change Naruko's perspective on is like his sort of mindset regarding speed Whereas with Onoda and Imaizumi, I feel like it's more physical based and it's more like, you know, once, like, you know, by, um, by riding these bikes that, that don't have these certain things, that once you get them back, it, it automatically becomes, like, so much, uh, more, like, lighter and easier. Um, so you can actually push yourself beyond in your, in your normal, um, with your normal sort of setup on your bike. Um... <clears throat> Which is the the great the best way to train? I mean, it, it's like I said with like weight training and stuff like that. The reason why you gradually go up in um, in weight and stuff like that is not because you know what I mean. It's not because now like you're able to uh, to lift heavier stuff. It's just the the idea of gradually pushing yourself beyond so that you can actually get to that place. Because if they were just using their same old bikes with their setups in this cycling train and then there's no reason for them to push themselves more right um it's sort of it's a way of, of um tricking your own mind like subconsciously you're doing something that you do you wouldn't normally do if you had your original equipment so all this training makes sense um it's interesting that because obviously they didn't do it with sugimoto or anything like that which is kind of again low-key shade i feel like I feel like everyone just throws low-key shade at, at Sugimoto. I remember like a few episodes ago where I was like, you know what I mean? Like this guy, like this guy's just a, just a nuisance. Like he's an he's an annoyance. Like you know what I mean? Like I, I, I can't get away with his voice and stuff. But now I'm like starting to feel sorry for him because I just feel like he's never gonna have a a time to shine as a, as a you know as a bike rider. I feel like he's gonna be ultimately 
comedic relief, and that's what he is. Um, as of right now. Hopefully he does get his time to shine, because I do feel sorry for him a bit, but fucking hell, as of right now, he's just getting shit on. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, and, I, I, yeah, the other guy, whatever the fuck his name was, I can't even remember his name, he's that, like, inconsequential. The guy who didn't turn up because he had a cold or something. <laughs> like, like, that guy's just ultimately, like, even further below. But, uh, but yeah. So, um... It's interesting. I wonder if the third years actually talked to the second years about what they about what they should do regarding the first years or not. Because it's strange. The second years see it as like their individual goal. Like they're like, right, we're going in the high. So it's almost like when they were talking about that, they didn't talk to the third years. Yet this idea that, you know, they had um Teshima wait behind, allow Oyagi to go um a lap ahead. No, it's the opposite way around, right? Yeah, it's the opposite way around. So, so yeah, like I, because I, otherwise, like I don't see the reasoning as to why they would do that. You know, like unless it's just their way of just trying to stop them from getting that like thousand kilometers. But I, I don't know, like because that was that was the moment where Todokuro was like this is where like it's decided like it's the, the a thousand kilometers aren't enough this is where you know what i mean you um you prove to everyone like the reason why you deserve to go to a high so like Todokoro must have known then like he must have known with the second years beforehand that like this was this was what was going to happen so to me it's almost like the second years and third years planned this for this to happen It had to have been, because otherwise, what else would it, would they have done? Like, because otherwise, I don't see a point in sending somebody a lap ahead for the other one just to stay behind to, to push them back. Otherwise, there's no reasoning because you know the, clearly the second years would have won even if they'd gone a lap ahead together. You know what I mean? Like they wouldn't have caught up because they could have just you know stayed at a constant pace and they would have never caught up. So. I can only say it as that. Um, that being said, like the fucking the, the the soundtrack in this episode, great. Like they had they had a couple new like um, tracks in there, and I really like them both. Um, I always like tracks that, like you know, soundtracks that sort of um, they really mend. Uh, blend well with the the thing that's happening at that moment. So um, I don't even know how the hell you would describe one of the soundtracks, but I think it was when um, when they were being stopped by Teshima, right? And he kept on blocking them and whatever. And it's just that like kind of um, you know like sort of same sort of I don't even know what you call it. It was very very percussion esque, right? But it was sort of over and over and over again. It's just like that kind of tick in, in somebody's head of like what it would do you know what i mean time is passing and we're, we're not coming up with a plan and it's just like you know like it's building up to something and um you know what i mean i think that the the soundtracks themselves sort of blend well and especially when something is so like i guess this sort of helps in when it's like sport related anime of like those kind of moments where you kind of need to make a decision um and it becomes very like sort of tense and pressure heavy um so yeah, the fact that I've had some really, really cool uh, soundtracks this this episode, which I really like, um, and uh, and yeah, I can't wait for more. So yeah, the guy was blocking the first years. I, I fucking thought it was I thought it was a bit odd how he kept blo blocking them, but then eventually got to a point where he was at the side of them, and it's like you can go, you can go, you can go. <laughs> the reason for that was like, you know, I mean they could have gone earlier in the scene. I guess, but then again, it's anime time. You know what I mean? I've, I've explained this a lot of times, but it's like, even though it took like, like I don't know how many, like a minute and a half for him to like talk about that, you know, bloody, you know, what do you like, hot chocolate or tea and stuff like that. Um, and Teshima talking about uh, how he was in the crowd while he was watching Emizumi take on, you know, the podium. Um, 
you know, but like, I guess that's, that's just anime time in it. Like, it wasn't really like a minute and a half, it was more like five seconds, I don't know, <laughs> ten seconds. Um, so yeah, but because he knew, he knew that he knew the track and it was like, no, you've missed your chance because now it's now it's not, you know, flats anymore or a slight, um, a slight uh, incline, decline. It's not there anymore. And now it's, uh, and now it's like hills and, and, and trying to climb up, so... So yeah, missed his chance, and that was the reason why he obviously let off. Um, but yeah, I mean, this is what I wanted. I, I wanted the second years to be more involved because otherwise, it, it would be if they end up going in high, then it's going to be like, oh well, great, we didn't see them deserve it. But now it's like, yeah, you, you can see the reasons like why they're they they are that good. Basically, teamwork being their thing. Um, so yeah, that's cool. Um, especially like the technique of like being so close to the, to each other's wheel yet not touching, you know what I mean? Because I'm pretty sure we've had something like that before with Naruko and, uh, and Onodar, right? When when they first met and they were um, chasing after that car, right? And it was like, you know, get as close to uh, my wheel as possible. Now, by doing that, it's sort of like breaking the wind in a way. So with those, I don't know if it's just simply slipstream or what, but um, but yeah, it's cool that their their, their whole thing is teamwork. Um, you know, considering like them two as a pair come with now, that means that to me that basically says that those two won't be going into high together. Oh, sorry, that if they are going into high, they will be together. That that's what it tells me because they trust each other that much to the point where by just taking one of them it'll not be enough, you know what I mean, like, because they've built up that partnership, so if if, they, if one of them's going in a high, the other one has to, I think, I think that's how it's basically built up, so at that point, there would only be other, one more other, other spot, right, <laughs> which, who does that go to, I don't know, I don't know how you would decide, I mean, if it was me, Probably Imaizumi, I guess. I don't know, though. I, I don't know. It's tough. That's tough to pick out the three. Even though Nar Naruko is my favourite. We need to wait until the end of, like, this training camp before I would even decide that. But we'll, we'll just have to wait and see. But, uh, but yeah, that is all I've got for episode 15. So that is all. So thank you everyone for watching. In the description below, I've linked to certain things. One of them is the Discord. If you want any information regarding my content, you can get yourself over there and, and find out there. You can also come talk to me on the community as well. Uh, and a Patreon as well. I do have a Patreon. If you do want to support me, I'd very much appreciate it. There's a bunch of different tiers and rewards depending on how much you want to support me with. So there's the early access tier for $5 a month. That gives you access to shows a week early. And you get four episodes of Hunter Hunt every week as well. So if you want to see my reactions to that more frequently, that's what you want. Uh, $10 a month, that's the full length. Everything I react to gets a full length. Uh, $15, that is the exclusive tier. That gives you access to a bonus show, which is Seven Deadly Sins. Um, $50, that is the elite tier. If you pay $50, you get a choice of a show that you want me to react to. Uh, and I will react to it, but it'll go at the back of the list. But if you don't want to wait that long for all, to get for me to get through all those shows, then you probably want to get God Tier, which is $100, and that means that your show will be reacted to next, okay? So, uh, yeah, that was all. So thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.